we have this beautiful Japanese Stratocaster nitrocellulose lacquer. It's in for a refret. Some of these frets are down to like 28 thou. So we're putting a bigger fret in and a compensated nut. Now everybody knows that you generally don't mess with the mojo, you know, in a in a fingerboard when you get those wear marks. But this is not about mojo. Look, see this bubble here? See the lacquer bubbling? Look at it. See that's just flaking off. That's got nothing to do with hours put in playing or anything. This just it's, it's coming off. So we're gonna we're gonna basically level this. And I, I'm not going to take all the sort of dirt marks out and stuff. I'll leave them in. But when we're done, we'll get Darcy just to blow right over, just like Fender does. Put the frets in, blow right over top, steel wool the uh, material off of the frets, and then uh, we can kind of get on with a regular fret job. That bubble there. Look at, look at it. Yeah, this has got nothing to do with Mojo. So we're going with EVO fret wire on this. Those leveling blocks that you guys have in your kits, this is what we're going to use. We'll respect that original radius and uh, get the good frets in. When you pull the frets out, obviously the wood on either side of the saw kerf puckers up a little bit. So we're going to level this, we'll work this, and give you play by play, as always. Cheers. Okay, so now we can proceed with truing up that fingerboard along its length. It's pretty good right now. We're going to take all, obviously take all that flaky stuff off and uh, work this and get it ready for the new frets and it'll all make more and more sense as we get on with this job. Just about ready to start putting frets in. I just wanted to show you this is the third position marker, the fifth position marker. So what I've done is I've razor bladed these. So I'm going to pull back. Let me do these ones while you watch and you'll see the difference. So before I start tapping frets in, I just want to show you that this is my rough cut. That's how close I like to get it to the finished length before I tap the frets in. So I've got all the frets in that styrofoam in the correct order, ready to snap up and go. So the idea here is to have it so that the only thing exposed is the crown of the fret. So to answer the questions, there's a couple of subscribers that said, Oh, you didn't mask off the fingerboard. They were referring to the last couple of Rosewood fingerboard strats. In the case of a maple fingerboard, you definitely mask it off. Uh, but I find with... Um, Rosewood and ebony, as long as you don't have some super elaborate or plastic inlay, like in Les Pauls, if you feel you want to mask it off, knock yourself out. But I really don't think it's necessary in those cases. By contrast, in this case, it's super pivotal. So we're just getting ready to buff these out to a mirror shine. This guitar has been leveled. It's laser straight and there's still a little bit of load on that truss rod so if you back that off you'll get a bit of relief and I've mentioned this in lots of other videos where you want to have a little bit of load on that truss rod when you true that neck up so now Luke will be in the driver's seat forever as far as this guitar goes in adjusting the neck this is a canvas buffing wheel that I load up with Jewelers Rouge <laughs> And this buffs the frets to a one micron finish in a fraction of the time of other methods I've seen.
So a lot of Fender guitars, like when they do that uh, maple neck finish and they flood over top of the frets, you will oftentimes see quite a bit of residue left over, lacquer residue or finishing residue left over on the crown of the fret. I'm kind of heating them up here, buffing them out, and just, I like to clean off all traces of the finish on the crown of the fret. That's what we're doing here. So the 4-0 steel wool, it cleans up all the residual finish that's left on the crowns of the frets. There's lots of times where I see Fender guitars where there's all kinds of finish still left on the crown of the fret on these maple necks, but uh, I like to heat it up, buff it out, and clean it right off so there's no trace of finish on the crowns. One word of caution, uh, you do want to let that cool off. Now it, the shop is fairly cool today so it's, it has cooled off fairly quickly but generally I give it about five or ten minutes. Uh, let everything cool right down before you peel off the tape just to make sure you don't pull any of that nice new finish. So the final step I'm using to get back as close to the original patina as possible, I have this 3M Finesset compound, ultralight uh, ivory compound. So what this allows me to do is to clean up any residual compound that's left over from buffing, but to restore the finish to its original patina, which is not dead flat, but certainly not high gloss. That little bead of finish where the old finish met the new has been buffed out as well with the uh, with this 3M. This is pretty common stuff. There's several companies that make a, a similar product. There's Ferracla, Automotive Body Shop Supply. They'll have this stuff. I'll bring you in closer so you can really see the sheen on this. Yeah, this is bringing us as close to the original patina that was on the guitar, you'll look back earlier in the video and you can see for yourself. So that once again, when it's all done, it should look like the guitar's never even been touched, let alone had a refret. Now Darcy did a masterful job of, I don't know what happened here, the guitar was obviously dropped at different points and uh, the edge of the fingerboard got a pretty good bash, but there's no edges here. This has all been buffed out and all of that flaky stuff that you saw earlier in the video, it's long gone. So this finish is on good and tight. Luke doesn't have to worry about this flaking off, that's for sure. So essentially I'm just kind of cleaning up now any residual compound that might have snuck through that tape, that masking tape, and buffing the actual crowns of the frets and restoring that uh, sort of semi-gloss patina. Just about done. So next we'll be doing the compensated nut on this one. These are an EVO fret. I'm not a big fan of the stainless steel frets mainly because stainless steel is just not malleable enough. This is EVO fret wire. I get this from the folks at uh, Jess Car in New York, New York. And uh, I'm very happy with this stuff. So Luke decided to go with the EVO because it wears about seven to one, you know, over your regular standard fret wire. Very happy with that. Let me bring you in for a good close look. So this is final result. So you can see on the edge here where the neck got a bash, who knows what that was. Darcy managed to kind of just miss the lacquer over that as well. Very happy with this. It's got now on to the compensated nut. I'll start by putting that fingerboard radius on the crown of the nut. Do that first. Okay. 
So next I'm tracing that convex shape of the fingerboard radius onto the compensated nut overhang. We'll cut that next. Good, like a man. So I used my little template here to just sort of check that and I'd say, yeah, we've got a pretty good match. We got her down to 161. So the rest we're going to do by hand and check as we go with the verniers. So remember, we're after 130, so we're getting very close here. One twenty-nine five, one thirty-one. We're going to switch gears. I'm going to cut the radius on the leg that goes into the slot in the fingerboard. That is my template for the slot radius. As you know, with fenders, it does not go in very deep. So I'm just kind of marking on each side staying a little bit proud of what I think the final depth is going to be. I'm scoring that radius. I'm getting ready to cut. Kind of flip at 180 just to rule out any possible human error on my part. Good. All right. Next step. Okay, so as I get on the final run with this, I want to check to make sure that the leg is perpendicular. You want that to be 90 degrees. Now, we still got a ways to go, but I always stop at that line just to double check to make sure that we keep that at 90 degrees. Continue. That's looking pretty good. Let's go over to the guitar. All of the calibration for Luke's Strat is done. The bridge and these are the final calculations for the calibration of the compensated nut. I have a 16 thou feeler gauge that straddles the neck and of course I've got the rubber band there. That 16 thou is really just a strike plate for the cutter. With this Strat of Jonathan's I haven't even started cutting the values yet. And once again, I have that feeler gauge to protect the fingerboard as I cut those values. The bridge has already been done, the seventh fret note and its corresponding octave note all the way across, all six strings, it's done. Okay, we got the 12th fret open and first fret note. So what's happening here is all the other values are done. The very last thing we're doing is we're lowering the nut slot so that the open string and the first fret note are in tune. I didn't want to block the camera so I'm kind of filing from this angle. So the sixth string and the fifth string are done. On to the fourth string. That's good. Okay, that one's done. On to the third string. Fret at 12th fret. And open. And first string. Okay. So 
everything's done except the height of the nut slot. So we're going to bring that down. I had one of my subscribers was asking, um, you know, what are the dimensions of the height of the nut slot? But, as I've said in so many other videos, it's a moving target. When you go from a, a Les Paul to a Strat to a Martin Acoustic to that Larravee I just did. So I base the dimensions on how in tune the guitar is. So the dimensions or depth of that nut slot is determined by how accurate the tuning is. 12 fret fretted and open. Okay, so four out of the six strings are done. On to the second string. There's our fretted 12 fret note. Looks good. Well, it's still a little sharp, so I gotta file that down. Okay, let's try that B again. Open. And just for good measure, we're gonna go ahead and do the seventh fret and octave. Oh, it's a little tiny bit sharp. Let's bring that back. Try that again. Seventh fret and octave. Oh, I went too far. Move it forward. Set it again. 7th fret and octave. 12th fret and open and 1st fret. Okay, that's good. We've got 5 out of 6 strings are done. Over to the 1st string. Okay, well it's 5 cents sharp. Twelve fret fretted. Oh, I'm happy with that. We're done. All six strings across the nut. Seventh fret, corresponding octave. Twelve fret, open string. Both of these strats are ready now to sort of finesse that nut and clean it up. Well, you're on the home stretch now, so you do not want to rush this part. So this is still a little bit proud. Twirl a little bit of glue in there. You don't need to, uh, don't need much glue. I always want to think about the next guy that might need to take this out at some later date. So we'll slip that into place. I've already loaded those slots up with uh, Carniba wax. Now that the nut has been glued into place, so now I just brush off whatever excess wax is on there, and that is 100% ready to go home to Jonathan. one down now to its final length. So now you can see why you leave that little bit of extra on the outside edge because you always want to have that luxury to be able to shift the nut one way or the other. Now this is a slightly narrower neck than Jonathan's guitar. Moment of truth for Luke Strat. And for Jonathan Strat, let's bring him into the studio, and you be the judge. So I laid down this chord progression. So I let that loop, and uh, as always, I'll just kind of let that play, and then uh, flick the pickups around and and play this thing. So this is just wide open.